recording audio in Audacity is very simple. If you press the red record button, the recording will start. Though the recording is as simple as clicking a button, you have to set all the options correctly before recording. Otherwise, your recording quality will be poor. I will show you the process of getting the best quality recording possible. Go to Audio Setup, and you can configure the necessary options here. The most important configuration is the recording device. You will see all your connected microphones from the recording device. The currently selected microphone will have a tick mark beside it. For me, it is MacBook Pro microphone. If you want any other microphone on the list, click on that, and that will be selected as the recording device. Sometimes, you may not see all your connected microphones in the list. It happens when you attach the microphone while Audacity is open. In such cases, go to Transport and Rescan Audio Devices. You now can see a new option appears, Scarlett 2i2 USB. It is the audio interface through which my microphone is connected. If I used a USB mic, I would see the microphone's name. I can select it by clicking on it. Besides microphone, you have to set other things like recording channels. Rather than setting everything one by one from here, you can do that from audio settings. It is more convenient, and all the necessary options are here. It is the playback device settings. If you play the audio after recording, this device will be used for playback. So it is not important to set it before recording, unless you use live monitoring or an overdub feature. I will get back to these points later, for now, I will record a simple voiceover. For the recording device, I will choose Scarlett 2i2, through which my microphone is connected. You will see a different name if you are using another audio interface or a USB mic directly attached to the computer. After selecting the recording device, set the recording channel. There are two options for recording channels, mono and stereo. For voiceover, mono is fine. For music recording, you might want to select the stereo recording channel. With a stereo recording channel, you can add different effects on the left and right sides of the headphone. You will not need such effects for voice recording, so select mono to keep things simple. You can convert a mono track to a stereo track if required later. The next thing you have to set is the sample rate. In previous versions of Audacity, it was called project rate. From version 3.3.1, Audacity named it sample rate. The microphone captures audio as an analog signal and needs to be converted to digital data to be stored on a computer. The sample rate is the number of samples taken per second during the conversion. Theoretically, the more sample is taken, the more details of the audio is stored digitally. It is under the quality section, and you can see two options, project sample rate and default sample rate. The project sample rate is for this project only, and the default sample rate works as the default value for any new project. You do not need to use a higher sample rate than 44.1 kHz. Still, you need to be aware of this sample rate. A lower sample rate, like 32 kHz or more down, may fail to capture all the good bits of your recording. So you should not choose a lower sample rate like 32 kHz. However, the opposite is not true. You will not notice any difference in audio quality with a higher sample rate, like 88 kHz or more. Instead, your file size will grow significantly and take up much disk space. You can get the best possible recording with 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz. All the fantastic MP3s you listen to are 44.1 kHz. 48 kHz is used as the sample rate of CD burning. You can choose a sample rate of 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz. I see no good reason to use any other sample rate than 44.1 kHz, so I will use it. Though 44.1 kHz is the default sample rate, I discuss this as many beginners wrongly think their bad recording is due to the sample rate. As you can see sample rate is under the quality section, you may wrongly blame the sample rate as the cause of your bad recording. That is not the case, and when you are not getting a good quality recording, it is more likely your recording environment or equipment, not the sample rate. Keep the default sample format to 32-bit float. Once again, you may not notice any difference with 24-bit or 16-bit recording. But 32-bit float recording has some advantages during the editing process. So choose 32-bit recording. All the things from the audio settings are configured, and now I will move to the next settings of the input level. Audacity has two meters to monitor the audio level. The first is the record meter, and the second one is the playback meter. 
We need to focus on the record meter during recording. Click on the mic icon and you can start monitoring the audio level. It is vital to set the recording volume level properly. Post-processing your audio heavily depends on the input level of your recording. Your goal would be to hit around minus 12 on this meter during the loudest peaks. Not every spoken word has to hit minus 12 in the meter. Only the louder sounds should be around minus 12. Other spoken words should cross minus 24 and be around minus 18 most of the time. You can rearrange these meters to extend them to see the reading properly. I will take the recording meter in a separate row to see the reading at a very detailed level. The recording meter also has a slider that can be used to control gain. You can drag this slider to adjust the recording level. Though this slider sometimes freezes due to a bug in Audacity. It has freezed at the moment. Let me show that from the playback meter slider as both work similarly. You can adjust the slider and check if the meter is hitting the right place. When it hits the right place, you set the slider in that position. I usually keep the recording meter to 100%. As you see, even after it is 100%, I am hitting around minus 12 in the playback meter. You may have to position the microphone differently if you fail to hit minus 12 on the meter even after increasing the gain. You may have to come closer to the microphone, talk louder, or adjust your talking direction. You may ask me why you have to hit minus 12 on the meter. Well, you can hit higher than that. But notice the maximum on this meter is zero. The closer to zero you record, the less headroom you will have in post-production. If you boost some signals in post-processing and it crosses zero, it would result in clipping or distorted sound. Minus 12 is a safe enough value to get enough headroom for post-processing. You can always boost your volume level after recording the audio. So keeping some headroom for post-processing is a smart thing to do. You can stop monitoring by clicking the microphone icon and stop monitoring. I suggest you enable the device toolbar in your Audacity. You can find the device toolbar from the view, toolbars, and device toolbar. A new toolbar has been added, and you can always see which microphone is currently selected for recording. As everything is set, I will press the record button now and let you hear the original recording. Audacity is the best free audio editing software. If you know Audacity very well, you can do many kind of professional work with Audacity. The recording is done, and you see the track. You can see the audio waveform inside the track. You can play the recorded audio by pressing the spacebar. Audacity is the best free audio editing software. If you know Audacity very well, you can do many kind of professional work with Audacity. After recording, you can save the project from the file, Save Project. Saving project from here will create an Audacity project which is not a playable audio file. If you want a playable audio file, you have to export it. You can export it as MP3, WAV, or other audio file formats. Usually, export is done once you are done editing your audio file. If you want to record another audio track, follow a simple trick. If you press record again after recording audio, a new clip will be added on the same track. It is a new clip, but on the same track. To record another track, you have to take playhead to the position where you want to start recording. The black vertical line is the playhead, and I will move it here. If I mouse over the record button, you can see the shortcut to record in the new track, Shift R. As I pressed Shift R, it started recording a new track. Now this is going to be recorded in a new track and this is the way it I will end this video with two options from transport. If you want live monitoring of your audio, that means listening to the audio as you record, you have to make software playthrough on. For me, it is off as I do not live monitor during recording. Overdub works with multiple tracks. If you record another track but want to listen to the other tracks while you record, you have to turn on overdub. As you see no tick mark beside those settings, it means those settings are off for me. After watching this video, you should practice what you have learned. After that, watch the video in the description about audio editing basics in Audacity. Thanks for watching and see you next.